Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I guess I'll start by telling you who I am. I'm Isabel, and I'm one of the founders of Bear Conductive. And I guess I'd like to start off with just a few questions. Like, could you raise your hand if you've ever used glue? OK. Have you ever used a marker? Have you ever, uh, do you know what a battery is? Do you know what an LED is? So, OK, starting to change. Has anyone here ever made a circuit? OK. Uh, have you ever used a soldering iron? Awesome. Now, the reason I ask all these questions is because they seem irrelevant to each other. Um, I'm, I work for a company where we try to make those two things, like glue and paint and actually soldering and circuits, all live in the same world. Um, so to tell you a little bit about the company, uh, we're called Bear Conductive. Uh, we were founded in 2009. Um, and it was basically started by four of us, a group of friends, myself, Matt, Bibi, and Becky, who were students at the time. And we were working on projects together, and we kind of shared this interest in stuff like making, hacking, tinkering, and just creating stuff that was physical, but also lived in the world of, of electronics. Um, and as we were working together, we, we came upon this interesting challenge, because we found that in our component box and in our toolkit, there seemed to be this gap. Um, there seemed to be something missing um, that was kind of preventing us from working between a world of tools like this, like Arduinos and breadboards and wires and electronics, resistors, transistors, um, and our toolbox and materials that looked like this, like paper, cardboard, our glue gun, our markers. And we were really interested in this sort of gap because actually, as people who worked with both of these things very comfortably, um, and who, who kind of wanted to work with both these things together, uh, we wonder why there wasn't something that made it easy to, to bridge the gap between these, these tools. Um, so we started really thinking about this problem and thinking of a material that would maybe work as a, a substitute or as an interface between these two areas. And we, we decided that there wasn't anything out there that was really meeting our needs. So we decided to make it. And we started playing around with chemistry and stuff that we found in the pharmacy and stuff that we found at the supermarket, and we actually made a conductive paint. So what is a conductive paint? Uh, for those of you with less knowledge of electronics, basically, uh, conductive paint is like a wire, but it's liquid. And what that means is that then it opens up a way, a um, whole plethora of possibilities in the way that you can interact with the material because you can apply it with a paintbrush like you do when you paint your walls or when you make drawings. Uh, you can squeeze it out of a pen, so you can make fairly um, sort of defined and intricate images. You can screen print with it, so you can actually make a very, very precise image come out of, of a material that basically looks like a poster paint. And then you can use any of these Im images that you've created, and you can run a current through it. Um, and that gives you two, two main uh, ways of using the material. Our paint can be used to power small devices, so it can be used as a circuit, um, but a circuit that's graphical. So you can make an image into a circuit. You can make a circuit onto a surface and actually make it become invisible, because all you see is a graphic. The other way that our paint works is that it can actually work as a capacitive sensor. What that, a capacitive sensor basically, in this case, what it, the way it works is that a pad of the paint can hold a charge. And when it's charged, you, you can touch it and actually make that charge vanish so you can ground it. And the way we then use that is if you're clever, you can sort of use it with Arduino, with other microcontrollers to actually not just detect when it's been grounded to create a switch, but actually detect a distance from that piece of paint in this case. And so what that means is that then you have this new platform for interacting with electronics because you can paint them on a wall, you can paint it on a table, on a piece of paper, on a piece of cardboard, and you can make your circuits or your sensors graphical. You can make them soft, they're ubiquitous, and they're multidimensional. 
So when we developed this material, one of the things that we wanted to do with it was not just to make it technically functional, but to make it really user friendly. We wanted something that was safe, that wasn't toxic, that anyone could paint all over the face and then wash off if necessary. Because part of the point was not that electronics engineers and PhDs would be using this material, though we want them to. It was that also three-year-olds, four-year-olds, my mother would be comfortable using it and safe using it at home. And once we actually put it out there, we were really surprised and pleased with the kind of stuff that started coming back and the ways that we were seeing people using it. Because although we had a range of ideas that we thought it was good for, so painting circuits or attaching components, we discovered a whole range of other uh, applications for it. Um, on our website, we have a community page where we encourage people to send us images of the projects that they've used the paint for. Um, and these are just a few examples of the things that people have done with it. Up here, we have somebody who has, is like a model railway enthusiast. And he uses it to actually cold solder onto his trains because they're plastic. And if he uses a soldering iron, they just melt. So this is a great tool for him because it allows him to, to fix his tracks. Um, other people are using it to surface mount LEDs. They're really teeny. They require a lot of precision. And it's nice to just be able to dab whatever and stick them on. Uh, people are using them on fabrics. The material is fairly flexible, and because you can screen print on it, then that allows you to play with wearables and e-textiles. We had a group of people who actually used it in liquid form, which is really interesting, because they created a tilt switch so that you had two wires inside this glass jar, and the paint was just floating as a blob inside. So as you move the jar sideways, if the blob basically covered the two, the two connection points, it would turn on the light. A lot of people are using it with Makey Makey. Does anyone know what Makey Makey is? Well, it's an amazing uh, project, I believe, from the MIT Media Lab, where they created this very easy instrument to sort of create um, touchpads from anything that conducts. So you can attach it to a banana, you can add, attach it to a pepper, you can paint a pad of our paint and actually make a musical instrument. So it's really fun and it's really easy for children to start to engage with electronics. Um, we've had people use it in three-dimensional form. These blocks were painted with um, different combinations of paint and so depending on the 3D structure that you built, it would generate different sounds. Another just capacitive sensor on a wall, so an interactive surface. Um, and this was actually connected to a printer that as you touched it, it would really send a message out and get some information from the internet and print it out. So it's sort of like interfacing with the web. And what we found really interesting in all these projects actually is that initially we were just selling paint because we didn't want to define what people had to do with it. We didn't want it to be prescriptive. We wanted it to be open. And we actually found that the people who were using it were still the people who knew how to use really sophisticated electronics because it was still too open. So we decided, okay, we have to make it easier for people who've never played with electronics, who are intimidated by electronics, to sort of approach this. And so we generated some kits that come with a pen and just the most basic uh, components that you need. The one on the left basically has some cards. And they allow you to make a simple circuit, a circuit in series, a circuit in parallel by drawing. In the houses, you make a more complex circuit where you attach transistors and resistors and a light sensor. So you create sort of a little light, night light that comes on as lights go off. Um, and these have been really successful to draw in people who wouldn't normally engage with the traditional breadboard. Um, girls are in general underrepresented um, in electronics and science. They really like coloring in traditionally. So this is a way to pull these people in. And one of the things that we started doing was taking these kids to classrooms to see whether students would engage and to see what kind of students would engage and just to test them and see whether they were interesting. And we got a lot of pull from educators and teachers who said, we want to use it in the classroom, but it doesn't work in this format. So we actually then started making classroom kits um, to sort of help large groups of students engage with electronics. Um, teachers really like it because it pulls from sort of um, lots of disciplines, from art, from science, so you can apply it in lots of different areas in the school. And this has been a really exciting area because we test a lot of our products and 
do a lot of development in schools. We just bring ideas and all the students sort of start to make instruments. We're developing a new one that's based on resistance. So students can make different sounds and create instruments using the paint. Um, that's the house one, and that's for a student that made an oboe in one of our recent workshops. And so it's a really rich field to sort of explore. And that's why you find the maker movement so, such a rich area for us as a company, because we put all these ideas out there and we get feedback from people to see what they're doing and what they want to do with it. So what are the next steps? Um, well, we feel like we've done a good job in achieving our initial goal in sort of bridging this gap between electronics and, let's say, paper craft, if we can call it. But we realize that there's still a lot to do in lowering the barrier for people who don't have that much technical knowledge um, to start playing with these things. And so the next step is going into hardware and to making hardware that will help you interface between these two areas. Something as simple as making an Arduino type board that is actually completely surface mount, so it's very easy to just stick on a piece of paper. But there's a lot more possibilities out there with making interactive paper electronics. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say for today to tell you about the company, but I, what I would love to hear from you guys is what ideas you have for things to do with the paint, what things you think that are missing that should be generated out there. Because we would love the opportunity to work with people, to collaborate with schools, with other institutions, and to just generate more products that people can engage with. So are there any questions? Yep. Uh, the weirdest thing that somebody has wanted to do with it. Um, I mean, there's a lot of strange things <laughs> that people want to do. Uh, we've had people who actually want to tattoo it inside, like onto their skin, so they can become sort of like a human, human circuit. Some people might say, actually, that's not that weird, but that's pretty extreme, if not weird. <laughs> We have people who are making sensors out of anything and everything. There was a guy who used the capacitive sensing to make his boot, the boot of his car pop open, which is pretty cool because he kind of like walks over and passes his hand over and the boot pops open. But then you can also just have a button that does it. So whether it's necessary, I don't know, but it's still pretty cool. I guess it's like the force. <laughs> Any other questions? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that's, a, that's a great question because it's funny, we come from sort of like the design world and we get a lot of people who come from the electronics world who say, this is ridiculous, conductive paints have been around for 20 years, you're claiming that this is your new idea, whereas actually it's been established in industry for ages. Um, and it's true, we're not trying to replace industrial electronics and printed stuff. I mean, silver conductive paint, performance-wise, um, is far far better, the conductivity is far better. Um, copper paint, again, but our material, because it's not solvent-based, because it's not metal-based, it doesn't oxidize, um, it's not toxic when you're using it, it doesn't generate fumes, so we view it as a different kind of paint. Um, in terms of like technical numbers, if you were, paint to, were to paint like a one-inch square with the material, the resistivity would be around 60 ohms. Um, but again, then the actual, that allows you to play with the capacitive sensing. So actually there's some things that are really cool about playing with the resistivity of the material. Any more questions? Yeah. Can you inject um, prints with it? Not yet. Um, that's one of the things that we really want to do. Because obviously, it's great having people painting it with a brush or with a pen, and I'm sure there will always be applications where that's what it, it's needed. But it would be great to just have an inkjet printer where you can really do really precise things really quickly. So we'd love to develop a formulation that allows you to do that. Yeah. Sorry? Um, we haven't tested it at. Um, I mean, <laughs> as a as a sort of has like we haven't tested the uh, what heat to what heat you can take it up to. Um, but it doesn't seem to break down. I mean, the material is water-based, so that's one of the things, actually, when you want it to dry, you just put it under a lamp and that'll help it dry faster. I don't know what would happen at very extreme heats. Any more questions? 
Well, there's no more questions now. We're on stand seven, and we're there until five o'clock, so we're happy to answer any more that you might have. Thank you.